Our first day in Madrid was all about trying to get over our jet lag. We got to the city in the early afternoon and we walked around because we wanted to take it all in, but we were in a daze. We enjoyed a nice lunch at a sidewalk cafe and we felt momentarily energized. So we took the Zero bus, a free bus that has many stops at many popular tourist spots. We ended up at the Prado Museum. We actually just wanted to scope it out for a future visit. But I noticed that people were lined up and I wondered if there was some kind of special event happening. It turned out that it was a sort of special event. It was a free night. I was game. Yeah, Greg was ready to go, but I was having doubts because I was exhausted. We did end up going in, but we only got through a few rooms before Alice started complaining that the floor was moving and the walls were waving. So they were. I decided it was best if we left. So we went back to the Airbnb and we probably got to bed at around 7 p.m. and I woke up at 4 a.m. Ah, I hate jet lag. But I'm glad I got some sleep because I had to present the following morning. So I just got done with my first presentation in Madrid and I'm so relieved. Uh, I think it went well. I have never presented completely in, in Espanol, but I was very fortunate because the audience was very helpful. They were very generous and gave me the words that I was missing. So thank you, Madrid. On to Cuenca. After lunch with some of the faculty of the university, Greg and I made our way directly to Atocha Station to make the one-hour trip to Cuenca. Hi, I'm Alice. And I'm Greg. And today we're here at Atocha Station in Madrid. It's about four o'clock and we're just about to catch a train to go to Cuenca. We flew into Madrid last night. So on the lower floor of the station, there are a lot of shops. There's lots of food, coffee, and little gift stores, a yoga shop, all kinds of stuff. So if you get here early, there will be something to entertain you. Cuenca was founded by the Moors in the year 714. The Moors built a fortress here which was called Cunca. Some speculate that the name Cuenca may have come from the name of the fortress. Cunca. Cuenca. <laughs> Cuenca. All right. Well, the first night we arrived in Cuenca, we were invited by our host to attend a concert of folk music in an ex-convento, a decommissioned church. There were people from all over the village, old people, young kids dancing around to the music, and it was a beautiful night. After the show, we were invited to join a group of friends for tapas in an ancient stone house. I thought it was interesting because they invited us to go out with them after the folk concert and we started walking past a restaurant and I'm like, where are we going to a restaurant or a bar? And then we ended up in this small house, very old, like Greg was saying, and uh, they had a table out with a bunch of chairs and um, they asked us what we wanted to drink, beer or wine, and they opened this huge wine cellar and the host brought out jamón ibérico, jamón serrano, hunks of fresh bread that tomatoes. was tomatoes. She made that cheese that was oh absolutely my God. It delicious. It was imbued with honey somehow. I don't know I don't know how they they put honey in the cheese but So, I don't, I'm not sure how they. It do was it. a feast. It was it was a feast without being over the top. I think there's just the wine, the hospitality. Um, okay, so early the next morning, Alice slept in. I got up early because I wanted to catch the sunrise in Cuenca, and I'm not sorry I did. Although I did regret it later in the day when it hit <laughs> me really hard. But I'm going to show you some of the footage I captured from walking around. Enjoy it.
Analcazar is located at the top of the hill. Analcazar is an Islamic castle or fortress that was built during the Muslim rule of what is now Spain between the 8th and 15th centuries. Our host and guide, Eduardo, drove us up to our hotel, and on the way, we passed Plaza Mayor, which is dominated by a cathedral. We made a mental note to come back after checking in to our lovely accommodations. I'm turning over stuff. <laughs> you can hear my uh, suitcase struggling to go over the cobblestones in the background. I'll show you where we're going. Check out the old-fashioned key. <laughs> this is our new hotel room. I love it. <laughs> Check view. out our view. It's incredible. Look at that bridge down there. So yeah, that was, we were given a room with a breathtaking view. We quickly unpacked and walked down the hill to the cathedral. This Catholic cathedral is mostly Gothic, though other styles were added over the years. Opened in 1183, it was built atop the site of a mosque. There's a small fee to get in. I love these ceilings. What's interesting about stained glass is you really have to see it in person, right? It's like, the, it's the light that can't translate into a photograph. This church is one of the earliest examples of Spanish Gothic architecture, and it's full of bizarre, unusual details, like the column behind me with arms growing out of it. Check it out. The closet goth in me loves the detail behind me, which is a bas-relief carving of death triumphant. So I think this piece is really interesting because this woman is obviously not Caucasian. She has darker skin and she reminds me a little bit of the Virgen of Guadalupe 
but it was way before they had even dreamt of the new world. So take a look. Cuenca is also famous for its casas colgadas, or hanging houses. These are houses that have been built on the side of a cliff overlooking a gorge. Today, the appearance of houses built on scary hillsides is not that unusual, but it must have been quite frightening to hang over the cliff on one of these balconies at the time that these were originally built. La Leyenda de la Casa de la Sirena In the 14th century, there lived two brothers named Enrique and Pedro. They were princes who were in line for the throne of the Kingdom of Castile once their father, the king, died. The more ruthless of the two brothers, Enrique, arranged to have Pedro murdered. Now there was nothing to stand between him and the Castilian throne, except for a beauty named Catalina from the town of Cuenca who caught his eye. He kidnapped her and locked her in this house, where he forced himself upon her until she became pregnant with this child. The mother and infant were soon placed under guard in the Casa Colgada so that no one would learn of his illegitimate son. The boy remained a secret to all. Enrique, now the king of Castile, was prone to superstition and he consulted with oracles who advised him that his own son would one day threaten his kingdom. The king was shocked at the soothsayer's knowledge of his secret offspring and insisted that they must be mistaken, for he had no son. The ruthless King Enrique then ordered that the infant son of Carolina must be immediately executed. The baby was pried from the mother's arms and put to death in front of her own eyes. Some say that she ran screaming to the cliff and threw herself over the side. Others that she was imprisoned in the house for the rest of her brief life. And still others say that you can still hear the wails of La Sirena Catalina echoing across the canyon on dark nights in Cuenca. We did a little sightseeing with Eduardo, who was one of our hosts, and Cristina, who was going to be presenting with me. Later that afternoon, we went up to the art museum where I did my talk about whether punk is still relevant, aided by Cristina Garrigos, who helped me at every turn. And then it was time to do a DJ set. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed this week's episode about Cuenca. Next week, we're off to... Barcelona. Barcelona. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when we upload a new video, which is sometimes on the weekend now. <laughs> <laughs> Usually on Thursday. 